Did you know that your in-laws can significantly impact the relationship you have with your partner or your spouse? They can actually make your relationship better or make it worse. Today we are here discussing about the impact of in-laws in relationships. My name is Sally Limo. Join me as we get into this discussion. Join me on SMS. Send me your compliment, comments, or even suggestions on 20316. WhatsApp number is 786 316 And I'm joined by a gentleman and a lady to help us just understand or even just know what kind of challenges we go or even achievements we go through with our in-laws welcome to studio ladies and gentlemen <laughs> douglas and Pat. please introduce yourself <laughs> to our audience all right uh, my name is douglas angogo mm -hmm. uh, i am married to one beautiful wife jambi moshogia mm -hmm. And uh, a marriage uh, the family consultant, and I'm glad to be here. Karibu sana, yes. Karibu, Paps. Yes. Yeah, and my name is Paps Wanyoki. I'm mm. a confidence and wellness coach, and I run coaching outfits for women, uh, preteens and teens. Mm -hmm. And so, by extension, we also work with families. And one of our programs, which is dear to my heart, is Bold Wives. Okay. Positions with wives, and of course, these relationship issues come up. Karibu nisana. Thank you. Now we get straight into our subject of the day, which is the impact of in-laws, others call them in-love, uh, you know, relatives. So what is your perception, Doug, if I may start with you, on, uh, you know, relationship with in-laws? What is your perception on in-laws? Right. Um, <coughs> thank you, Sally. Uh, I think um, perceptions differ um, on individual basing on their upbringing sure. and uh, probably even their past. Mm -hmm and a misconception that they've had about in-laws. Because yes. the challenge we have is we, we have a lot of information outside about in-laws. Mm -hmm. And especially when someone gets into a marriage relationship, mm -hmm. already they have a tinted uh, image of a mother-in-law, mm -hmm. a father-in-law, uh, the sister, yeah. and all that. Uh, but I'll say um, all of us have in-laws. Mm -hmm. um, or probably have people that belong to us. Mm -hmm. And you can call them third, third yeah. parties in, in marriage. Um, I, I, for me, is uh, in-laws are not supposed to be feared. Mm -hmm. And that's why the word law makes it become like there must be rules and regulations regulation. that guard the relationship that yeah. you're going to have this person. Yeah, but, but isn't that so? Isn't it so? It is, but I think when you put in like rules, it's a law, mm. then we get into it afraid that you're going to break any of them. So we are, we are relating the in-laws mm. in court. Working on eggshells, kind shells, of? Yeah, because probably, should I say, should I not say? Should yeah. I communicate? Should I, not? Or not. should I be close to them or not? Mm -hmm. yeah, so uh, that, that um, assumption okay. that there must be some probably um, a gap between the two of you. A barrier, as really, kind a barrier of, yeah. Doesn't create a good or a smooth family because family is supposed to be united. Okay. Yeah, so okay. for me, is a... Uh, Whatever you call them, mm -hmm. I think they're not supposed to be. Uh, what do you call them? For me, I call them my in love. other family. Or in oh, love. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. Perhaps your perception? Um, my perception is just, first of all, the biblical perspective of a man shall live and cleave and become one flesh. In Genesis 3. Yeah, True. And so there's actually that part of fully adopting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, we are also coming from a cultural context. Mm -hmm. um, I remember like I'm from Kikuyu community mm -hmm. and I grew up hearing Odoni mm -hmm. and You don't step step okay. on your in-laws. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I saw how my dad would actually treat them. Mm -hmm. And of course, also how my mom was supposed like, if you are married there, you have to, you know, lie down and allow them to walk all over you. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you are a guy, you know, you keep them at a distance. Yeah. Yeah. But then also now getting married in 2012 and mm -hmm. see my mom fully embrace my husband. Okay. In terms of you are my son. Mm. I remember actually one time when we went to visit and we were like, no, we have already booked ourselves a place. He was like, how can you sleep somewhere else and I have free beds here? Mm. Mm. You know, and just being able to break those cultural barriers. Yes. But for me also, there's just that perception of it's an honoring relationship mm -hmm. yeah, because those are not your relatives. Yes. You know, they are his. Mm. And so there will always be those biases mm -hmm. in terms of what he prefers may, is what may swing. Mm -hmm. And of course, also, he's also in a conflicted place when there's conflict in terms of do I support my wife or do I deal and just stand by my family? Yeah, and for Already. me, I've graciously been married to 
you know, James and he stands by me. Oh, like he's fantastic. chosen me and chosen me and chosen over me. And of and course, over. I've also chosen him. Mm. So for me, I feel like that is a relationship. But for me also, the foundation matters. Like okay. how you started mm -hmm. mm -hmm. sets the pace for mm -hmm. how things will go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, I'm going to share about that later. And I love how both of you already, like, it's like you're already into, uh, you know, into the mix already or thinking what I'm, I'm, I'm the question I'm about to ask mm -hmm. it was going to be about culture mm -hmm. does culture have any impact be it positive or mm -hmm. negative on you know in-laws and, and our relationships with our spouses or partners mm -hmm. yeah and already we've started that conversation <coughs> so probably uh, Douglas you can take us through you know culture does culture mm -hmm. play a role in the or has an impact mm -hmm. on our relationship with the in-laws I feel like I started saying is uh, the way we're brought up, eh? mm. and um, our Pastor M mm -hmm. um, of Mavuno Church normally put it this way that we have. Uh, it was about the five hours, but yeah. I'll talk about the four mm -hmm. that we come in a marriage the package. Yes. So my me my, uh, Douglas gets into a marriage with mm -hmm. Jambi. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jambi has a package, mm -hmm. and have a package. Those yeah. packages fall in terms of five R. Mm -hmm. Talk about the rules. Mm -hmm. Talk about the regular. Uh, I talk about the uh, reasons. Okay. He talks about religion, uh, uh, rights. Mm -hmm. They talk about the rituals. Okay. And uh, when I'm coming in, because of the way I've been seeing things happening in our family, mm -hmm. that is culture, I'm coming in the way I've seen rules operating in our marriage, in yeah. our family. So mm -hmm. uh, the, the rules might be things like probably in our home, I know where dad sits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, a father or a husband does not sit with everyone on the table. Yeah. So his seat is somewhere <laughs> located there. No one sits on it. Yeah. And that's done. And probably faces the door. It faces <laughs> the door, yeah. And uh, yeah. that's what I'm coming in. Mm -hmm. Or that's what she's coming in with. Yeah. And the moment now you get married, uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm really coming up with, by the way, uh -huh. um, I'm not supposed to sit with the people or eating time. The, eating time, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, 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 if there's food, mm -hmm. uh, the husband must eat the big, the better part of the food first. I've had family where the husband eats first, then the kids eat later. Yeah. yeah so when we come in different roles mm -hmm. about how our family is, supp yep. is supposed to be probably uh, maybe cultured. Yeah. And then your culture clashes with my culture. Mm. And then what happens is we feel like, by the way, I think you're not understanding me. Mm -hmm. But that's why in most cases, I normally say, before you even start getting into a relationship with this person, or yeah. when you plan to get married, understand mm. how they've been brought up. Mm. Understand um, uh, the culture that have been probably modeled in, mm -hmm. because it will eventually come and eat you up. Yeah. So when the two of you don't really talk about your cultures, mm -hmm. and you see, when the Bible speaks about a man shall live, yeah. It doesn't mean that you're only going to leave the physical location of the family. No. The things you need to leave. So in most cases, normally say, if um, I get into a relationship with my wife mm -hmm. for marriage, then we bring in different, like I said, the R's. Yes. But at the end of the day is we pick what works out for us. Mm. Because we're living in a generation that you don't expect. I normally say, we were raised up seeing our dad, when they come from work, mm -hmm. they are welcomed in the house. And they're given water to wash their hands, yeah. and they're told what they do want to The baby kingly kind of treatment. Yeah. Right now, mm -hmm. in our houses, every house has a tap yeah. for washing <laughs> hands. So how do you expect that because this house is raised, so may I come to my house, yeah. and then I sit down. Mm -hmm. It's eating them, and the tap is there with water, yeah. and I'm waiting for my wife to come and wash my hands, and go and eat. Yeah. But probably she doesn't mind doing that, the culture bit But now, the yeah. culture bit of mm. it, the, the way it affects is because yeah. we're living in a nation that is very really different. Mm -hmm. Things have changed. True. We don't really operate under what used to happen. Mm. So we must get into a place whereby our minds must be renewed. But now what is right? What, mm -hmm. what really works out for all of us? Not yeah. what used to work out for and all of us. And also not what works for your in-laws. Because they, they, in they'll definitely visit and they're seeing Atia, Jambi. You, you mean you cannot give your husband yes, water? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. You mean your husband is serving himself? Yeah. And that's what culture says, that no, mm. you must serve the husband first. Mm. But nowadays what happens, there's food on the table, they're in, all of them are in their dishes. Pick what you need, it's a buffet. And I want to, to bring in uh, <laughs> Pops. <laughs> Pops, do you agree with that? You know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I just build up on what Douglas has said. Mm -hmm. And for me, first of all, when it comes to culture, mm -hmm. it's realizing that all of us are also mm. living and cleaving to a third culture that we are creating mm -hmm. together, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. And for me, I think that culture, especially when you are a believer, it's God, mm -hmm. in terms of what is God's standards mm -hmm. and requirements for us. Mm -hmm. And I love um, some wisdom that I got in our 
formative years of marriage. Yeah. You know, my husband doesn't mind doing chores, but he was just feeling like I'm overstepping. And of course, we were talking to a pastor friend of ours, and he mm -hmm. was like, perhaps when you're asking James to help you with chores, do you ask as a wife or do you ask as a woman? Mm -hmm. Because when you're asking as a woman, he responds as a man, men don't do chores. Yeah. yeah. But you're asking yeah. as a wife, he's responding to covenants mm -hmm. that I'm your husband, mm -hmm. I can help. I can mm -hmm. see Douglas is yeah. very when, much When it comes to also the kids, <laughs> even when it comes to finances, because yeah. ideally, James should provide. Yes. And so when he asks as a man for my money, mm -hmm. then women don't chip Give, in yeah. on budgets. Mm -hmm. But if he asks as a wife, mm -hmm. I can respond to covenant and support. Amen. Oh, wow. And so there's that perspective of what is your context, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and if that culture that you're building together mm -hmm. is not centered in God. In terms of there are men who will say, hey, I don't do house chores, you know, I touch it with the end of a stick. Yeah. You know, but what if your wife is unwell? You know, you would actually go out of your way mm -hmm. to help out mm. if you are in the fear of the Lord because you're responding to covenant. I say yeah. for better or for worse. Yeah. But normally you'll just be like, no, 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 men don't do chores. Mm. So you let it drop fall, including yeah. your kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are seasons that it will not be convenient to follow culture. Mm. Mm. And those are the days we follow Christ. Yeah. And of course, there are many positive parts of culture. Honestly, mm -hmm. I really love the African culture, especially mm -hmm. having lived in other nations mm -hmm. and also just having this context of understanding Mm. cross-cultural dynamics. I right. love African culture, mm. the right. kindness, the hospitality, mm. the mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. There are so many beautiful mm. things about culture. Yeah. But then there are also ungodly things about culture. Mm. A lot of them. You know? and, and that was part of our discussion actually mm. this mm -hmm. morning in African traditional religion. Yeah. I don't know if you got to. Oh yeah. 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 So I, I think that's yeah, what actually you're talking about. Yeah, that was actually part of my study. I happened to do religion in campus. Mm. And of course when you're doing the African traditional religion, how mm -hmm. people would even greet for five minutes and mm -hmm. they catch up on it. Oh, <laughs> the cow gave birth. <laughs> Yes, and uh, you know, like yeah. within that greeting, you've done all the catch up. Yeah. And instead of hi, hi. Mm. You know, and of course, everyone will just hi even if they are not fine. Okay. Yeah, so that aspect. But mm. for me, also, when it comes to culture, I love the way Paul says, mm. you are keeping the traditions of men. Yes. But you're forsaking the traditions of God. Mm. And I think sometimes that is where massive conflicts, even within laws, come mm -hmm. in. Because we are keeping the traditions of men in yeah. terms of what you do and mm. what we do, but mm. what does God require of us? Mm. And so there is that now center part okay. where both of us are willing to drop what's convenient for us mm. and we just ask ourselves mm. right now, right mm. here, yeah. what is God's requirement of us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just to add on what she's saying. Eh? Right. Because most, when you talk about the in-laws, mm -hmm. then you're operating, like say, you're operating under the some regulations. That Rules and regulations, follow, right? yeah. But when you talk about the Christian content, mm. when I get born again, mm -hmm. then there are things that I don't really have to um, probably get into it because yeah. I've been renewed. Mm. So I'm not operating under the culture, mm -hmm. but I'm operating under what is acceptable before God. Whatever mm. is true, whatever is noble, whatever is praiseworthy, whatever yeah. is of good report, that's what I'm trying to really work on. Mm -hmm. So culture might really defend, don't even get your mother-in-law. Mm. But I'm free from that. Mm -hmm. Culture may say that you need to shed blood as a way of probably atonement when you go yeah. for these weddings and all that. Uh -huh. But you see, because I know I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus, there's no any other blood that needs to redeem me. Mm. The Lord am I supposed to do is, yes, mm. what she's saying, I'll be able to agree with the covenant of marriage okay. rather than the covenant of culture. Okay. In terms of roles, like when Pastor M talked about the five R's, uh -huh. when you talk about roles, I really, that was shaking my head when you talk about the roles. Eh? Yeah. Tradition and culture tell you, you know what a man is not supposed to. To do there's a this way, and that. There's, there's, a, there's a way he's, he's mm. supposed to step and not to step. Mm. And a woman is also not supposed to step in like for a man. How mm -hmm. does a man ask me for money? But I love the way she's brought it out. Yes. When my when my wife asks me for money or my wife asks me to help her in yeah. the house chores, I respond as a husband, not as a man. Mm -hmm. Which she said, respond as a covenant partner. Yeah. Not a very important fellow human being mm -hmm. with this. Because you get into it as a, in terms of understanding this is I'm a man, maybe mm -hmm. do this. Mm -hmm. It's okay when you do that, but husband do that. Yeah. So for me, like we talk about roles, boss, I cook. <laughs> I wash my kids. <laughs> uh, I play with them. I change their diapers. Even mm. this morning before I came, I changed mm. one of the, the, the mm. one diaper. Mm. But you see, that's what a man is not supposed to do culture wise. Mm. But a husband or dad, mm -hmm. you do it. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Oh. So um, here we are, and we're talking about the impact of these in laws in, in this relationship, the marriage. But what are some of the challenges that, you know, as, as a couple, people would go through with the. With the you know, with the in-laws. What are some of those things? Because our viewers and listeners definitely are there and we want them to at least also relate and like, yeah, that's it. What are some of them, <laughs> either of you? I mean, I know, I know Pap has many, yeah? <coughs> I love the way she's been in you know, the <laughs> African culture. <laughs> yeah. One thing that you, the first you'll be able to encounter in a marriage covenant mm -hmm. and uh, maybe um, the influence of culture yes. or maybe in-laws, mm. one thing that probably is 
always coming off first is the naming of children. Uh -huh. And uh, when you get married, your mom from both sides will be like, ah, at least. Eh, <laughs> So your firstborn, they already given you a name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But see now that's a place of conflict. Mm -hmm. But now, like she said, mm -hmm. when we do programs for young people, because mm -hmm. I also do PMCs for yes. young people, mm -hmm. normally tell that when it comes to in-laws, mm -hmm. build your own home. Mm -hmm. So meaning that is how they know that the first one should come, f uh, should be named who and who. Yeah. So like for us, we had that conflict, mm -hmm. and you know, first our firstborn daughter Shama, mm -hmm. when she was born, we already had suggestion from p my parents. Mm -hmm. um, Mm. And my, my wife's name, my wife, mm. mom also, like, can you call her? Yeah. But you say this is our kid. Mm. This is our kid. Yeah, you're so going we to name make our that kid decision. based on our own, mm. what we need. And we decided before, that's why it's important that as you even start dating, mm -hmm. talk about uh, what is acceptable, mm -hmm. what you'll be able to live and not to live. Yeah. Uh, so we said even before, you, even trusting God for a kid, mm. we agree with my wife that we'll never name our kids after our our, our, our generation. Yeah. So we'll never give, I would call them family names. Eh? Mm -hmm. So there's no extension of my family because of I'm giving birth. Yeah. I can start my own. Mm -hmm. So why should I continue Your that? legacy now, yes, your yeah, own. I, yeah. I can start my own. Mm. So we, we, well, that's a place of cont uh, okay. contention. contention. So when you're able to really explain to them, so we told them, it's okay, mm -hmm. I know this is what happens, mm. but we're building a home. Okay. We're neither giving a name from my side, mm -hmm. which is a lawyer, mm -hmm. neither name from mm -hmm. their side, which is a kikuyu. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we decided that our kids will have unique names. Yeah. So when you explain it early, mm. of course they were like, ah. So did you, f did, you didn't experience any yes, of uh, resistance? Yes, of course, yes. You did. Of course, it was like, why? You see, this is supposed to be happening. They told them, don't worry. Mm. We're still giving birth. The second one came. <laughs> and they were like, you know, you don't give it. No, we're still there. The third one came. They told them, no, wait. Mm. So when you're able to discuss with them, tell them that, you see, bring a picture by, okay, they'll be able to push you. Mm. Yeah, they'll push you, they'll ask you, by the way, uh, what's happening here? Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember of a couple who they gave birth, but they had not planned. It was yeah. um, mm. um, the miracle babies. Mm. When you say that I'm still having two years, then I can now trust go for a baby. Mm -hmm. And the baby came after one and a half years, mm -hmm. and they didn't even have a name. Yeah. So they were like, which name do we give? Uh, give my mother's name, give my mother's name. Yeah. So they decided, now neither of us are going to have a name. Mm -hmm. Because you see, when you f you see mm -hmm. some of these names, to be sincere, is at times you even don't know where they came from, the origin. So here we have the the naming the naming oh, that's part one of the conflicts so that is naming, naming. Mm. uh huh Very Any, uh, perhaps mm. um, I think for me one of the biggest conflicts that will probably manage for the rest of your life is just the fact that you are not born there mm. Mm. you know my context my worldview mm. my priorities. And even probably my perspective, even mm. on family, on marriage, on relationships, is mm. totally different. Yeah. And for you to learn to be secure in your identity, in terms of I may never fully fit here, and yeah. it's fine. Mm. Because so sometimes you have to accept we work that too from hard the for it. Yeah. Mm. And of course, you need to deal with your approval, addiction, and people-pleasing tendencies mm -hmm. when you're coming into space mm. of marriage. Mm. Yeah. And for me, I that is why I was talking about foundation. Mm. Foundation is everything even mm. on in-laws. Right. And that is why I really empathize with people who probably start on the come we stay. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, that is a battle that you'll just keep on fighting because mm -hmm. you are finding out mm -hmm. things on the go. Mm -hmm. As opposed to when you go through the PMCC that mm -hmm. Douglas is talking about mm -hmm. and you preempt the conversations. It's like you fight the battles before they begin. Mm -hmm. And, and I you just that decide. come we stay, that mm -hmm. come we stay yeah. bit. So you don't yeah. even, do they even consider you as an in-law in the first yeah, place? Yeah, they're like, are you even mad? Why are you calling yourself his wife? Mm -hmm. As far as we're concerned, mm -hmm. our son is single yeah you know and maybe and that is why behind yeah. the scenes that is why as, mm. as douglas was saying about the process of living and cleaving it's not just living physically it's living culturally yeah financially mm. socially emotionally even yeah. spiritually mm -hmm. i've met people who the husband still insists we go to my wife's you know like we go yeah, to my parents church, church. Yeah. yeah so like they will commute for almost one hour mm -hmm. to go to where because that is our family church and you mm. see it's because this person doesn't have their own spiritual identity mm -hmm. In terms of being able to say, I'm now leading this family spiritually. Mm. Yes. So mm. they expect to take you to be led mm. by their family because these mm. are my spiritual leaders, my mm. parents. Even a couple will probably take their child to be named and baptized in Ushago mm -hmm. because we don't be have, shaved. yeah, mm -hmm. because we don't have our own identity. <laughs> yeah. So because yeah. we also don't even go to church, mm -hmm. and then now my mother, because she's a deacon, she's this big yeah. shot in shags. So we have our ceremonies for the kids done there. All the way. And you see, that is still part of living. So when there is no living in all those spaces, mm -hmm. the conflicts will always be precipitating. I agree. You know, you don't live financially, you'll always fight about money because mm. is it their money or 
our money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I remember for us when we got married, it was just that exchange of when your parents ask for money, mm -hmm. I give them. When my parents ask uh -huh. for money, you give them. Yeah. Well, so that you uh -huh. send them mm -hmm. on Mpesa mm -hmm. and they're like, yeah, by the perhaps I sent me money, mm -hmm. but I talk to James. Yeah. For so they see there's know, communication also. Yeah, everything is just you, everything it? is on the table. We mm -hmm. are one. We are we are a unit. It's a good mm -hmm. one. And so we come together. Mm -hmm. And of course also when it comes to culture, we've also talked about that in terms of is he able to stand up mm -hmm. even in terms of the naming. Yeah. In terms of even roles, like yeah. when I go to the village, am I now the family donkey? Mm. I need to do all the chores, right. the chapels. They, they expect me to come with the flour and mm -hmm. make chapels, mm -hmm. you know, because I am wife. They were yeah. You know? the yeah, they're it. like, please load it, load it, show us your skills, prove yeah. yourself that yeah. you're prove good yourself. for, our, for yeah. our son. Yeah. Yeah. And so that aspect of... First of all, I need to come from a place of I don't have that need. Mm -hmm. We don't have that need. Mm -hmm. We actually want to honor God. We love them. We will go and make the chapels mm -hmm. because we love them. Yeah. We will go and we will send them money because we love them. Mm -hmm. But not mm -hmm. because we are trying to win approval mm -hmm. and try to fit in. Mm -hmm. Because then that becomes a transaction and then now that is legalistic. Mm -hmm. In terms of law checks in, love lives. Yeah. And grace also lives. Mm -hmm. And so what happens when now the difficult times come? Because they will come. Mm -hmm. yeah, the Bible says offense will come. Offense mm -hmm. must come. Definitely. Mm -hmm. you know, and so the days of offense will come mm -hmm. in terms of of they said something, they did something, they mm. showed up in a certain way. Because mm. you remember I've said, you didn't grow up there, you don't know them, yeah. you are actually discovering them. Mm. And so in the process of discovering them, the bottom will come Conflict. off. Yeah. You know, everybody will Definitely. go and show their true colors, they will say what is in their mind. Mm. And of yeah. course those will be hurtful moments. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And how you've been building up in terms of investing mm. and mm. detaching and showing up in a way of we are a front. Mm, okay. That is what will strengthen you because even those times that probably James may not agree with my family, I may not agree with his family, uh -huh. we talk. Yeah. Mm. We talk and we're just and like, we'll be married mm. with this will be our 12th mm. year. Okay. Oh. And so yeah. from that perspective, you'll just be like, mm. I don't agree with this. I don't mm. agree with your sister here. Yeah. I don't like what your mom said or what your uncle said. Mm. And then you thrash it. And then you see sometimes there's also that part of him mm -hmm. going back to them and saying that was not kind. Yeah. Mm. Whatever you say to my wife. Mm. And you see so that is how he repairs. Yeah. And the same thing mm. if something happens on my front, mm. I go and address it. I'm like, mm. yeah, by the way, that was not So nice. standing up for each other. Yes, mm. yes. You know, stand up your for families. Each other. Because yeah, if yeah, if yeah. for example, uh, you know, James now goes and, and you know, he's attacked by your family, quote unquote attacked. Eh? It is now for you to go to your family because you if he addresses yeah. them, yeah. then it it will be like he's so disrespectful. Mm. And again, you are but their family. He's exactly. Not. Yeah. yeah. So, and also, yeah. I am I am the, my family's like he's not our he's family. He's not. Yeah. So, so there are so many yeah. dynamics about our family that are complicated, and also to learn to recognize mm. and to honor those differences. Mm. I usually call them irreconcilable differences. Yeah. yeah. In terms of, for example, James's family, they are avoidant in terms of how they deal with things. We are mm. confrontational mm. in terms of how we deal with things, and so it means that they will always be. That that clash yeah, in terms yeah. of we are expressive, we drop it like it's hot, we speak our mind, yeah. and then for them, they withhold, you don't mm. even know whether, do you, do you like, do you not like, <laughs> yeah. do you like this dress or you don't? <laughs> you I don't. mean, are you sure that is a genuine expression of, yeah. you know, in terms of how yeah. you really feel mm. or think about mm. this? And so just being able to walk through that okay. and to just have honest conversation, because by the end of the day, when it comes to the in-law dynamics, the power is always here mm. between the two of you. Mm. Wow. wow. Well said, well put. There's a very interesting question that is coming in, and I think it's for you Doug, <laughs> there's this issue, it's contentious, it's dicey yeah. in mm. terms of you're the man of the house, mm. you're out with Jambi, you're going to church, your mother is at home, and you're going to church, who sits in the front seat? Because that's something that <laughs> has brought issues in families. I know, yeah. I know. I know of a family whereby the mom uh, had to force the wife to get from the front seat to sit back, <laughs> eh? And the man was just there looking. In mm -hmm. terms of this is my mom, yeah, this, this is my, 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 this is my, my son's, son's car. car yeah. <laughs> Everybody I've, feels entitled. Yeah, I've raised this <laughs> son and you see... We have suffered. You've suffered a mm -hmm. lot, eh? Mm -hmm. And the wife is like, but I've also raised him, eh? The mm -hmm. things I've done together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's he who is because where I picked him, mm -hmm. when I got it. So there's a lot I've done <laughs> for the category there. Yeah. Well, about the sitting, eh? Mm -hmm. I think when you talk about, like you say, uh, I think I just add to what you say. When really look at every relationship that you're having these people as a law, yeah. Then we'll be operating in fear that we're breaking a law. Mm -hmm. um, and normally, in most cases, in terms of um, a spouse, yeah. uh, maybe having a conflict with your in law, mm -hmm. whether it is a wrong one, yeah. or whether your wife is on the wrong, mm -hmm. or your husband on the wrong, then it's the, your, your role as the spouse to bring harmony, mm -hmm. of course, yeah, mm -hmm. by s where are you going back after that? When the wife or mom is sitting in front, uh -huh. after my end, I'm So, normally, say, the best you can do is defend your spouse first yeah. mm. and then correct the mess, then go and work it out. Now, who is sitting in front is it depends. 
Mm. One, if your mom probably sick, you yeah. know, kuna dynamics. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe your mom is not a bit um, uh, okay, mm. she's not fine. Mm. And maybe she has a problem. So when she sit at the back, maybe mm -hmm. she won't be comfortable. Mm. Secondly, maybe I have a small kid. Like my wife, she doesn't like sitting in front. Mm. If we have a small baby, yeah. she sit behind. Yeah. So you still look at those dynamics. But I think in terms of uh, uh, in-laws that the mom respecting this couple because mm. these are family, mm. then you're not supposed to get into. In fact, where to be told where to sit. Mm. Um, I've heard even of whereby uh, a mother-in-law gets into a house uh -huh. and then she changes everything yeah she gets in the kitchen and she's like i these things are not well arranged mm. or this tv should have been this place mm. and you see when you do that as a man you're supposed to tell my mom you're coming to visit us but not you're coming to my home yeah and whatever my wife decide to do that's what you do yeah, so i think like she say the place that you play in as a spouse to protect your um a wife or husband against the in-laws is key as a man or as a wife, mm. because like she said, I'm the one who knows the thing that works for us. Mm. They want to call the the like the the the, the rituals and the rules. Mm. So this is how we are cultured. Mm. But now this is our home. So let this person is coming. Even if it's your sister, some yeah. people have maybe my small sister coming to visit with us, and this small sister, um, in your home, mm -hmm. she knows how probably dad is being treated by mom, and mm. mom is treated by dad. Mm -hmm. So when she comes in, she's going to pick up at eh. Why are you not doing this to my brother? Yeah. Yeah. But when you set rules early, even your mom, if the car is there, she'll not even get in. She'll mm. ask you, where do I sit? So it seems it's, it's actually it's about the man. The man yeah. is not the one to set the pace, to set yes, all yes, the, the, you man, know, the ground rules. Yeah, yeah. in terms of that. Mm. But I'll say both couple. Mm -hmm. Set the ground rules. Like mm. you said, make the foundations known. Mm. Let them know this is, what, how we, this is our home. Yeah. So in our home, this is how we do things. Okay. Because I'm not marrying um, a, a, a maybe a community. Okay. The challenge you have, uh, perhaps, is men mm. think mm. that the Bible speaks about, of course, um, uh, it should be Genesis 2, 21, 24, mm -hmm. that a man shall live. Mm. But there's, they forget that um, the living is not all about just being cleaved. Mm. You normally see what happens during weddings. Mm -hmm. I think that should change. Eh? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. A man is waiting for the wife to come in front. So, mm. who is being brought or walked on the aisle? It's the, the wife. Lady, mm. yeah. The lady, yeah. So, it's like you, you are, you, you're not living, you're not being given. Mm. But when you change things so that all of us have been given into a different yeah. <coughs> set. So, so you're so both you're, walking. Yeah, walking mm. in. So, you're coming from theirs, I'm coming from ours, mm. and you're coming to make it one. Mm -hmm. But when you put it like, but then you're bringing them. So, mm. it's like I'm bringing pups into our family so everything we do in a family she must get into it oh. yeah, so mm -hmm. the man or the spouse has a bigger role oh. to really create a space that these people will thrive okay mm. yeah mm. all right and then perhaps there's also again another question and the mm. question is in regards to um you, you're the wife james is here but anything you discuss with james he has to consult the mom mm. you know mm. like uh you remember that property hello mm. mom mm. do you think mm. how, how do you handle such mm. uh situation mm. i think for me that is one of the living conversations mm. because you mm. remember the process of dating and courtship you're supposed to start leaning in more on this person on mm. making decisions about mm. life and when you're thinking about living like uh, we usually have a list like for the wives mm -hmm. in terms of the places mm. that you need to work towards living even even if you're married mm. yeah like mm -hmm. keep on having these conversations mm. honestly and one of it is living intellectually mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because is it because you think pubs cannot make intellectual decisions that mm -hmm. is why they are better people to consult sometimes it's even friends mm -hmm. in terms of i discuss yeah. serious things with my friends and mm -hmm. then i discuss shallow things with pubs yeah. exactly. shallow. Yeah. yeah that part of intellectually building up each other mm -hmm. in a way you can actually make decisions together okay and for me it's just that process of living mm. and then cleaving when cleaving has not happened in terms of you're vulnerable mm -hmm. when you're confused you talk to this person when you're not sure you talk to them oh, yeah. when you are feeling low you talk to them mm. because cleaving happens at that point mm -hmm. and then after that that is when the one flesh will happen okay. and that is why for me sometimes when that progression is broken we usually draw it as a triangle mm. in terms of you shall live you shall cleave one flesh wow. so sometimes a relationship starts with one flesh in terms mm. of we just ended up in bed together mm. then the living and cleaving is not guaranteed not because i mean mm. what is there to fight for and to live for mm -hmm. and that is why that problem that is why they like even something like sexual abstinence when mm. you're dating yeah. Yeah. is it's very helpful yeah. like just keep the purity so that you deal mm. you fight the big battles that you'll fight ahead mm. you know the big battles yeah tackle those difficult have difficult conversations mm. because every time you usually disagree you have makeup sex you disagree you have makeup sex then yeah. you never discuss the meaty issues i love that in terms of 
intellectually mm. let's bond mm -hmm. you know let's have intellectual conversations where do you see yourself in 10 years mm. how can i come alongside mm. where do yourself in five years what do you think mm. about properties and investments what do you know what can i learn from you mm. you know in terms of bond there yeah and then now when those days come that probably the property and everything number one if james will always consult his mother instead of me then it means yeah. he has not left intellectually yeah and then he has also not left culturally in terms of now we are in a god culture where it's now us it's now us tearing this shape of our family because is it that i've even seen a guy who will actually go and consult his mother on whether they should get a baby uh, now oh. you know mommy are we ready to get babies okay you know should yeah. i buy this land mm. should i invest in this thing i've heard about it in terms of that means that even that mother for example if i'm the mother-in-law i'm also not wise mm. because i'm like did you check with your wife you know what does she think about it you know Fantastic. probably that aspect but yeah. for me i feel like most of the times it's actually a place of ignorance mm -hmm. in terms of the process of living yes, and cleaving living. was not clear before one flesh happened okay and that is why sometimes people will even be like i was a virgin when i got married but mm -hmm. we don't connect it's because you never cleaved mm -hmm. yeah the cleaving yeah. never happened and when the bible is talking about cleave especially in terms of just the hebrew mm -hmm. and you know background it mm -hmm. was actually like gluing together yes mm -hmm. in a way if you tear this one you tear this one mm -hmm. and a marriage that doesn't have that strong bond in mm -hmm. terms of it's mm -hmm. you tear you tear me mm -hmm. you tear you tear us yeah then it means that it can't support the tent yeah. and and of course thinking of marriage and family as a tent yes every time there is that aspect of even in-law rivalry and dynamics what happens children usually are left in the middle mm, because true. they are the equally attached to the their their yeah. grandchildren yeah, yeah. Mm. they're his children mm. but then i'm their mother mm -hmm. so where am i even in making decisions on kids which schools they should go to what sh should happen to them yes you know should they eat vegetables or you know should they eat mokimo they should mm. eat chipo and they go to shago mm -hmm. you know such contentions i love oh. that perhaps and that's quite profound that's quite deep mm -hmm. and and really uh you know, it's a conversation I want us to go on. Mm -hmm. And as you keep on engaging me or engaging us on our SMS number 20316 and WhatsApp number 0786-316-316, please drop in your comment and let us know what you think, what you feel, compliment, compliment suggestions, talk to us on those numbers. And let's continue uh, with our conversation. Mm -hmm. We left it at uh, a very good place, but with that, we also want to maintain uh, respect and, you know, just that lovely and uh, can I call it mellow relationship with our in-laws. Mm -hmm. How do you set boundaries respectfully so mm -hmm. with your in-laws, mm -hmm. Doug? <coughs> Thank you so much. I love what Pops was saying. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, you see, most of uh, even why people are getting into conflict with the in-laws mm -hmm. is because of the process. Yeah. Um, they short change the process. Mm -hmm. So even before they know their in-laws, uh, like she said, they're already in the flesh. Mm. So um, when we talk about cleaving, because mm -hmm. most people leave, but they don't cleave. Yeah. So you don't become one just because you're leaving. No. Mm. You become one because you already accepted and intentionally left. Mm -hmm. And leaving means, like you said, what really doesn't work for you? What to, what to look at your marriage and mm. discover the way this one isn't really what is going to make our marriage work. Yeah. So uh, things like, um, uh, normally the simplest thing, like even just getting the cup from the table in, mm -hmm. the, in the home. Eh? Mm -hmm. So if you're not able to leave, uh, then you can't be able to cleave. Mm. But some people leave, but they don't want to cleave. So yeah. cleaving means they don't want to leave now create their own union because mm. one flesh, like she said, uh, it's like a sandwich. Yeah. When I bring the two of us together, it's like when I'm eating a toast, I don't say I'm eating two toasts of bread. If I've done a sandwich, mm. I've, I've toasted my bread, we call I'm eating two toasts, two, 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 I'm just I'm taking a toast. Yeah. Mm. So meaning the cleavage comes in now, the two of us mm. are able to really have yeah. a one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. uh, I can say, we have in one mind, we make decision by consulting one another. Mm -hmm. We don't fear each, any one of us probably taking up mm -hmm. or maybe doing something because there's no fear. Yeah. At quit this by the culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of setting boundaries, yeah. um, and as she said, the process, do it as early as possible. Mm -hmm. Let it not be like an instant cutoff. Okay. So I normally say if if you guys are going to date authentically, mm -hmm. then it means I'll be able to tell my wife to be. Mm -hmm. um, I've been supporting my mom every month mm -hmm. by three thousand. Okay. I have a sister who I've been supporting, mm -hmm. uh, pay for her school fees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing this and this and that at home. Mm -hmm. Now the moment I don't discuss this with my wife, mm -hmm. and then it continues in marriage, mm -hmm. and then because my wife raised that issue, yeah. then I cut it instantly. 
So what will happen? Mm. My mother in law will say it is your wife since you got influence. married to one mm. who I don't get support True. from home. Mm. This this girl because sometimes the best relationship you can ever have is when your sisters are really close to one another mm. with your wife. Yeah. And this sister who you've been supporting, mm. she'll be like, since Jambi came in, mm. my my life my, has my, my, my brother doesn't support mm. me. So where the blame coming to? They will be coming to the wife. The wife. But when I set these rules early, so I tell my mom mm -hmm. that by the way we are getting married, mm -hmm. and as we're getting married, this is what we have decided as a family. That we're going to put our finances together, mm -hmm. and we also have a few things to work on. Right. So, mom, I know I've been sending you five k per month. So allow me to reduce it by two thousand. Mm -hmm. I'll be sending you three thousand. Mm -hmm. I'll be sending it two k. Mm -hmm. I'll be doing it one k. Okay. So. My mom already knows that this is a discussion. So mm. when that one K reduces or five hundred to five hundred, it is not like what has happened. Mm. So I already set the rules before and I've set the boundaries. Mm. This cousin, uh, 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 since I've been paying school fees too, yeah. I tell her, you know what we get in mind. Then we also have to plan for our mar uh, family, yeah. so that in future we're able to save. So I've been giving you five K as a pocket money. Mm -hmm. So. Um, thank you so much, baby girl. I love you so much, mm. but I'll be giving it one cake. Okay. Now, you already prepare these people psychologically. Mentally. When the marriage mm. comes in and that starts reducing, they know. They know. Mm. So what you do is um, date authentically, discuss all these things okay. with your people. Mm -hmm. um, and then now, this is now talking to mom. Now, mm -hmm. for your wife, mm. Uh, let us understand that this is what has been happening at mm. in our family. This, this is how probably mom expects. Like for us, our mom will call us every evening. So she'll call the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, every evening, just telling us how have you been. Mm -hmm. Now, the first time my wife received calls from my mom, she was like, hey, it's too much. Mm. But mom is just checking up on us. She mm. just loves calling people. And mm. like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> These calls are too much. Mm. Eh? So I told her, you know what? It's, this, she's not even after anything. Mm -mm. My mom is always just someone who just wants to talk to people. Yeah. So she'll call the four of us, the four mm. siblings, mm. and now call, call our wives. Wow. So I had to prepare my husband that when you see a call from my mom, mm. she's not chungozering anything. No. no. She's just That's out of just yeah. Yeah. Mm. So prepare both sides mm. so that when they see these things happen, mm. they know. The other day my mom was asking me that, hey, uh, my wife, my wife, hey, my mother, no, no, my mother. And he picked up, no. Mom, do you know that my wife, mm. that's her personality. Yeah. Mm. She does not, she's not does initiate relationship. Mm. Even for her real mom, she will take time to talk to her. Mm. So you, because you, you like calling people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just initiate the call. Yeah. So I was able to make sure that my mom does not she understands this, uh, she's a yeah. different personality yeah. altogether. Like, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So create boundaries, boundaries from the onset, yeah. but mm -hmm. that can only happen when you date right. Mm -hmm. Dating. Mm. And then you cleave, you you become, mm. you, you, you live, and then you One cleave. Place, but if you yeah. don't date authentically, mm. you'll be hiding mm. those things. Mm. Yeah. So you, you send money to Siri. Mm -hmm. mm. I remember the first few days of uh, marriage, like I love what you said. Mm. When my mom needs money, my wife sends. Mm. So yeah. it's the opposite. Mm. So remember, um, I used to support my mom. Yeah. So I uh, support, support. Then we were going through a, a bit of a tough financial uh -huh. situation. Uh -huh. So we needed to really a bit consolidate our finances. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I will really work hard and send, mm -hmm. but now I will not show up. Mm -hmm. And my mom, because she was talking, she'll call, ah, Hi, Mashama. Thank you. Ata, Baba Shama, to meet our moja. Mm -hmm. And me, I did it, and I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife left. Okay. Yeah. So you say you don't have money, but you said, Mama, mm -hmm. I didn't send money, even see my phone. No, no, yeah. no, no. no. Yeah. Mom yeah. said, mm -hmm. We have just so, and she said that you sent her one uh -huh. k. Yeah. So when you become open, eh, Your mom is it, so nice. it, it works yeah. out well. Mm -hmm. yeah. so <laughs> what happened? Like she said, it is a time, Nasty. and you said, um, let's do this. Yeah. Anytime my mom needs money, even if she is asking for me, yeah. and you don't you have, I'll give you the money you exactly. send. Exactly. Yeah. And it creates a lot of respect. Mm, it does, yeah. isn't it? Mm -hmm. I love, I love that. Yeah. Mm. I love that quite a bit because mm. I know, I know so many people that issue, especially of money, mm. uh, um, can easily come in and just cause a lot of chaos and conflict mm -hmm. in, you know, in relationships, in homes, you know. And so, even you see sometimes the challenge you have before you go on. Yeah. We assume that it's only my mom who needs money. Mm -hmm. So we are two. And um, I'm assuming that because my mom is in the village mm. and my mom is in Nairobi, mm. okay. my mom is the one who saw energy need. Eh? Mm. But when you discuss this with your wife and agree that we need to honor both of them, so we can decide this. My mom is in Nairobi, maybe she's well off, she's mm -hmm. having a few resources. Mm. But for us to bring that harmony, we discuss. So maybe my mom, because she's in Chicago, she has a lot of two things to do and no income. 
so let's send a mm. thousand. Yeah. But you go to Nairobi, we just visit and buy milk. Mm. Yeah, those, those, yeah. those kind of So even of your wife yeah. won't feel like, why is it that only your mom yeah. who needs to be supported? Mm. I, I, I mm. have, have experienced, of, I've not experienced, but I've had a friend who had those issues of money. And also when you're doing shopping, when it's going to our home, it's a lot. But mm. when it's going to your home, I make sure <laughs> we've finished the budget. <laughs> but anyway, that aside, we also, you know, people always talking quote-unquote negatively about in-laws mm. uh, perhaps mm. but we also have supportive in-laws mm. right mm. what impact do they have mm. in relationships you mm. know in in uh, yeah marriages mm. what kind of impact do they have all right um i think for me when you think about the positive experiences of in-laws mm. of course one of the things it's bottom line is attitude because like Douglas was saying, we usually come from a framework of in-laws are horrible people. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't matter what they do. I'm just like, mm -hmm, where is that headed? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is behind the scenes? Are you sure you're genuine? You know, did you buy me this dress? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, like that aspect of just being agitating in those relationships. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's also possible to still have turbulent in-law relationships. Mm -hmm. But through that persistent love of God mm -hmm. and showing up in a positive way, you actually turn things around. And let me just interject there because there's also a question mm. right on about what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Those in-laws who probably they would never change no matter how good you are. I mean, mm. even that grace sometimes just fails because mm. you've tried to be nice or, you know, dark sister. So we are, mm. he's, she comes, huh? what kind of, those kind of in-laws, mm -hmm. how do you handle them? Ile yeah. now image in Dikana, how do you deal with them? Um, I think number one, Douglas has mentioned boundaries. Mm. And you see boundaries, it's, it's not selfish, number one. It's not just about me. Mm. It's actually about how can it be better for yeah. us. Mm. And uh, for me, probably even in my own context, I approach it from that perspective right. in terms of this is not working. And when you're setting boundaries, mm -hmm. approach it from a place of curiosity instead of judgment. Okay. Mm. In terms mm. of why is she, why did she say that? Why did she do that? Mm. Instead of you said that because of this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, just approach it from a place of curiosity okay. so that you are learning to just understand they're not my relatives. I didn't but grow up here. Think, I'm yeah. the one who came. Mm -hmm. And there's how mm -hmm. they do things and they may never change. Okay. You know, so when I come into this space, I mm -hmm. come curiously mm -hmm. and willing to learn. And of course, when it comes to that place, it's first of all, I... I love Max Lucado has done a book, and I remember one of the chapters when we're, when your kids can't mm -hmm. to just understand relatives might never change, even my own. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. when your kids can't, mm -hmm. because even Jesus had impossible mm -hmm. relatives. Mm -hmm. But you see, there's also that aspect of it's the whole truth of mm -hmm. God's counsel on mm -hmm. how to deal with difficult people. Mm -hmm. You know, like in terms of love your enemies, do good to those who harm you. That that persistent effort sometimes is what will actually bring God's grace into those relationships. Mm -hmm. Number one, they may never change, but it will not be as hurtful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then number two, those boundaries will make sure we have healthy mm -hmm. relationships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. In terms of um, you are able to do things because you honor God, not because, mm -hmm. for example, like um, in our context, we lost my sister-in-law mm -hmm. and we took in two of his kids. Okay. You know, that is like seven years ago. Mm. And of course, when they came, it was a lot of adjustments. You know, we still had to set boundaries. As much as we've made this decision, some mm -hmm. things are not working. Mm -hmm. And then you keep on having conversations, yeah. difficult conversations. We even went and did a parenting class because the mm. children were taken were older than ours. Mm. And of course, it was also that conflict of, you know, sometimes whatever they will say will then get to exactly. shall go. And it's just this loop yeah. of you're trying to do something mm. good, but sometimes it doesn't feel it doesn't good enough. It doesn't come out good, yeah. You know? But at, in, in that context, it's also being to say, being able to say that I'm doing this for the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm raising them for yeah. God. And I will even tell them that. And of course, also... Uh, James is just really coming in a very supportive way because okay. it was my idea yes. to bring them in. It was wow. not his. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of that context, you will actually keep on mm -hmm. on just having these conversations and really showing grace and okay. stepping up on where stepping up needs to happen. Okay. And of course, also probably even in the formative years, like I've said, their family is a bit more quiet. Mm -hmm. Ours is loud and obnoxious mm -hmm. sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, like that part of also him being yeah. able to give you some decorum in terms of boundaries mm. like this works this doesn't work yeah the boundaries you know, this will happen this will not happen because you are mm. setting those boundaries mm. together as yeah. a couple you want the best for your in-laws you're uh -huh. not trying to agitate them mm. True. even when it comes to money you know you you want the best yeah. and like when when you always have the best i love um also this this context of the spirit of offense bait of satan is done mm -hmm. by john bevere mm -hmm. and he was saying even when you're having those conversations that are difficult mm -hmm. you need to ask yourself what is the outcome that mm -hmm. i'm looking for mm -hmm. because if my outcome is not peace then the process will not yeah. be peace yeah. Yeah. yeah because i'm just trying to prove a point mm -hmm. i'm trying to drop it and just you know just deal with it but then when i'm thinking like i want peace i want a better relationship mm -hmm. i mean god also honors 
it the does. perspective that I'm it coming does. from yeah. with, in terms of I'm having this difficult relationship with okay. my sister-in-law, but I want peace. Okay. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you may not achieve peace, mm -hmm. no matter how good your intentions are. Okay. Then you just still set the boundary in terms of sometimes it's even that physical boundary in mm -hmm. terms of we need space. Mm -hmm. okay. Sometimes it's emotional boundary. We can't engage. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it's also that aspect of this doesn't work, but I still love you. You know, no, I love yeah. you, I care for you. Like, I still communicate <laughs> that yeah. whenever we have those conversations. Mm. But at the same time, there's just that part of it didn't work. And of course, if this doesn't change, this can't happen, awesome. especially when there's dishonor. Awesome, mm. yeah. awesome. Yeah. Now, during conflict, eh, you find that um, I'm a, uh, probably I'm aggrieved as the, as the wife. And instead of just having open communication with my husband, free communication, I turn to social media. Mm. My in-laws are there. What impact do you think technology has played on, you know, this whole thing, the impact of in-laws and how to so we solve our conflicts mm. nowadays? Mm. I think the, in terms of conflict, eh, I normally say when you have conflicts mm. uh, with the spouse, eh, mm -hmm. I think it's between the two of you. Right. Uh, the challenge is when we're not communicating, eh, then now we communicate elsewhere. Mm. And that's why when someone goes online, mm. it's because even before the conflict arose, yeah. these guys have not been communicating. Mm -hmm. Because it's normally said, if you're not communicating with you, mm. that is me and my spouse, mm -hmm. then there's someone else we're communicating with. Yeah. Then that means we need to work on our communication, mm -hmm. first of all. So when you go, I think for any spouse or any couple who go now, they say viral, to throw their tantrums yeah. on social media, mm. It, the, it calls for a place of, uh, uh, I think, the cleaving. Because cleaving comes up, but we can really disagree, mm. but you can still agree to work on a few things. Mm -hmm. And then it comes to what you call maturity. Okay. Mm. So if, mm. if you're still um, 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 not really um, living in terms of I'm mature enough to handle a few things, mm -hmm then I can't be able to communicate with you. Okay. So I think maturity level matters more maturity before you even level? go on mm -hmm. and share things. That's why the Bible puts it very clear. Before even I put a matter mm -hmm. to more than uh, five people, yes. they should bring someone to discuss with. Mm -hmm. So it should be combative. So I bring it before mm -hmm. another, maybe a, a man of God. Yes. If it doesn't work, then I go to another. Mm -hmm. So when you see someone really, uh, can, I mean, I'm, I'm a pity so, all those steps, mm. then this guy must be having, of course, maturity, then failing communication, and then three, they must be going through some unspoken, um, uh, I think maybe trauma things eh? or trauma. So they have not really talked. Mm -hmm. That's I think the only aspect of that is communication. Because if you're not communicating with me, mm -hmm. then you're going to communicate somewhere else. Mm -hmm. The impact is when. Pe people read. Uh -huh. Let me say the people who will read the mood. You can just say they may put a line. Um, I know God is with me. People know. Yeah. It's not because you're trusting God for a job, but you say well, God is with me. Someone already knows there's a problem somewhere. So <laughs> I normally say even as you communicate with people outside, eh, hmm. especially your emotions, mm -hmm. be careful because we will read in between. Yeah. And your mom in law, your brother read, hey but the way I've seen the way Jambia's post on the Facebook, is she okay? There's something wrong. Mm. There's something I want us to discuss because we have mm. probably less than two minutes. Mm. And it's about intimacy and in laws. Mm -hmm. You're living, you have in, um, living in-laws. Mm. Is intimacy affected in any way mm. when you have living in-laws? Mm. Very briefly. Mm. If yeah. I think for me it depends with your relationship with the in-laws. Uh -huh. Yeah, because uh -huh. like you've said, sometimes you have very good in-laws in uh -huh. terms of when they come, they even strengthen your marriage. Right. Mm. They support you, you're not so tired uh -huh. in, in terms of the evening, you're actually up for it. Uh -huh. But then when you have too many conflicts, right. because you see one person is always living in the managing tensions, mm -hmm. then of course that tension also affects your intimacy. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing also when you're thinking about having live-in is mm -hmm. to also ask yourself, mm -hmm. must they really be here in this season? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. can we put them up in an Airbnb? Right. Can we rent a place for them or mm -hmm. can they live with someone else? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like for us, when we got married, the mm -hmm. ground rule was for the first one year, we are not hosting anyone, anyone. In terms of any friend, any relative, mm -hmm. we're just like, let's fight in peace. Okay. Yeah, let's just get to not try to micromanage and, right. you know, manage the environment because you are trying to work on actions around mm -hmm. other people. And you see, that gives you authenticity. Okay. Mm -hmm. At the time you're hosting people, you've already set the pace on how you want to relate with everyone else who is uh -huh. an outsider. Because everyone is a third wheeler. Yeah. Even the kids. 
when they come in well, later, they are still, and, yeah. yeah, sometimes actually kids are in-laws, you yeah. know, okay. yeah. <laughs> because for example, when you think about the context of yeah. even naming, yeah. Yeah. Okay. in terms of this one is named after my mm -hmm. mother-in-law, this one, I mean, it complicates the dynamic okay. and they can also affect intimacy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get it from uh, the gentleman's point of view very, very <laughs> briefly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you have in-laws with you, mm. living with you, mm. it affects a lot of things in your home, mm. even from just communication yeah. uh, to even the way you're making decisions. Mm. And now it affects your intimacy because, okay. like she said, um, that 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 authenticity that you're going to have, mm. uh, you'll be doing things based on how is it affecting the other person, mm -hmm. and the other person also trying to like mm. what are they doing, so that space of unity, and that's why I think the Bible puts very clear that the two of you mm. shall be united. Eh? Mm. Yeah. Okay. So the family. Great, great. What a great conversation. Yeah. What a great conversation. This was really enlightening, refreshing, you know. And I hope and I know wherever you are watching or listening uh, to us from, you've really, really gained a lot of wisdom and insights on how to just deal with these in laws. They are not such bad people at the end of the day. It just depends on how you come in. Also, uh, you know, wherever you're, is it invited or wherever you go, just like Ruth. You know, you just be nice. Sometimes just be nice. Because sometimes also from our own attitudes, you know, you just go in knowing these are laws, like Douglas was saying, the law bit of it. Just go in with love and uh, trusting God that things will work, isn't it? So thank you so much, um, Pops and also Douglas, for that very insightful uh, moment that you've had with us a whole hour. And you're coming to the end of this show. But before that, we really want to thank our partners who have ensured that you are getting this kind of content, very educative, very informative and clean content at that so we want to thank you uh, thank you so much our partners wherever you are from just keep on holding our hands keep on working with us and if you also want to be part of this amazing community that supports this worthy cause you can send your contribution to pay bill number 316 316 and the account number is your phone number. And also, if you want to be a partner, just send the word partner to SMS line 20316 or WhatsApp us on 0786 316 316 and be part of this amazing and wonderful community. Until next week, God bless you. When we shall see you then, have a lovely and blessed day. Mm -hmm.